And we'll have my uh, tripod set up here. I, I just want to talk about this uh, big black thing behind me. So um, I did end up buying a 2014 G63 AMG with the intention, and I still plan to. I'm going to be doing an off-road conversion, working with a company out of Fort Worth, Texas called Jack Wagon Overlanding. They do a ton of stuff to, to Gs and uh, kind of make them yeah kind of how they're supposed to be so i'm really excited about that but um when i first got this so i ended up getting it at auction and um you know you you kind of read the carfax reports and you're like oh this is great like you know one owner like no accidents whatever but mercedes are kind of tricky in that if they go to the dealership they really the dealership doesn't share well with carfax so that's something to be aware of you might get you know look at a g-wagon and be like there's no service history on this you really need to put your eyes on it because mercedes dealerships if someone is completely rich and is able to take it to a mercedes dealership to get all of its maintenance done um there might not be a record of that unless you have the the paper record so um with that, or again, sorry, one more thing. Um, if you know somebody that works at Mercedes, I got lucky. I was able to be like, hey, here's the VIN. Can you check this out? And, and things did check out. But that being said, um, so it's a 2014. It had 42,000 miles on it when I got it about a month ago. Um, you know, you would think that you look at this and you're like, oh man, like in the last five years, the owner averaged 800 miles a year, which that sounds great, but it's actually not good for rubber hosing, uh, more specifically the cooling system. And um, as soon as I got this thing, um, yeah, I had to redo the entire cooling system. Um, I also got the brakes done too, because that needed to be done. And again, I, I say this all the time, but you know, you come into a place with a, you know, Mercedes G63 AMG, no one feels bad for you about how much the brakes are, etc. Lucky for me, I do have connections around where I live. And so I was able to kind of part it out and get kind of the, the bro pricing on a lot of it. But, um, you know, fast forward, um, I had a trip coming up with my family, uh, just last week, I guess we got back from it, but, um, you know, we live in the Bay Area, traveling down to uh, Mammoth Lakes, went through Yosemite, as well as uh, Alabama Hills, down to Temecula, and back up through LA. So I knew this was the most this G-Wagon had been driven in years, I'm sure. I mean, even when I got it, um, looking under, it must have had like a car cover on it because there were the actual like latches um, where you connect a car cover. Like someone just cut them off and was like, here, it's going to auction, whatever. So whoever had this before me did not love it, but... I love it and I will continue to love it. But um, I was a little bit skeptical. So after I got the, you know, cooling system done, everything, all new lines, the whole octopus of hoses, all of that was done, uh, new brakes. Um, they also refilled my, um, the lockers. So there's actually a little reservoir of brake fluid, but that was all gone uh, conceivably because no one has ever use this g-wagon like it's supposed to be used um so i apprehensively um you know drove down through yosemite the first day i mean i'm pretty sure i was like annoying the hell out of my wife every time we would stop i was over there with a flashlight looking for any leaks opening the hood looking around like the valve gaskets everything just looking for anything now that you know this motor for a couple hours was under strain highway speeds switchbacks going through yosemite um it did great. Um, I watched everything. I brought oil. I brought coolant with me in case anything went south. Um, it was great. And then, um, you know, when we got down to Mammoth Lakes, did a little bit of light off-roading. I will say, though, so one of the things with this one is my uh, passenger side front shock. So the bill scene is actually blown. It's not leaking or anything, but um, I ended up, and I'll post a picture here, I ended up buying Fox 2.0 remote reses for it. I'm also going to get 18 inch wheels for it. And then I have some Jack Wagon um, coil springs for it uh, to actually raise it up two inches. The ultimate goal is this is going to be running on an 18 inch wheel and 33 inch all terrains. But, um, you know, definitely some of the, these trails I was on, I was looking at, I mean, these are, um, what are these, Proxus, uh, so Toyos, pretty cheap, just like street truck tires. And as you can see, there's absolutely no sidewall to them. So I was very cognizant of picking my lines smartly, et cetera, because the last thing I would want to do, like, it's fine if I'm just by myself, but with my wife and my son, I was like, man, you know, I, I'm one flat tire away from my family not liking this vehicle. So, um, it ended up working out great. Um, I will say too, like Mammoth Lakes, if you haven't been there, check it out. It's absolutely beautiful. All the really remote lakes. Um, there's this one lake called Crowley Lake, which I did get a picture of um, 
the G in, in the area, but it was pretty cool. Like uh, there was kind of, um, you know, you take this off-road trail and then there's um, this really steep grade, probably about 20% grade, all rutted out, et cetera. Um, there were a couple of vehicles parked at the bottom. Um, one was a Forerunner, the other one was um, a Ford Expedition and uh, they were parked at the bottom. So these people hiked in to get to this lake. I was like feeling a little saucy. I was like, perfect, you know, center lock, rear lock. Let's just let it walk it up, uh, you know, pick a good line. Even with street tires, this thing killed it. I, I mean, even my wife who she could care less, she loves the Jeep that I have too. Um, she was like, man, this is like, this is really impressive even on street tires. So, um, you know, got through everything, got to do some like real light off-roading. I can't stress enough like how light this off-roading was but it was still really cool and i will say that it built a lot of confidence in the g-wagon platform and um i'm gonna be doing because i i think eventually i will be selling my my jeep um i do want to make a few comparisons between a g63 amg and my jeep rubicon um obviously my jeep is much more built out etc but this thing was just a blast and, and i will say that the coolest thing about this like i mean you see these like mall crawler jeeps and you know lifted tacomas that have their eye camper on and you know max tracks and rotapax uh 24 7. um i will say like this this g-wagon kind of solves a lot of my problems in that on the highway it is super comfortable commuting to work it is super comfortable but you put it on the road or on you know off-road um it's an absolute beast um it it really really is so um you know really looking forward to that making the comparisons um you know in in the future here i am going to be doing so i'm going to get rid of uh if you can see here these side steps right here um i'm going to be doing sliders it also has those quad side exit exhausts um for the breakover angle that's definitely a weak point in this vehicle so um i'm going to be doing the mbrp exhaust to to lift it up um like i said you know new springs um you know new shocks um 18 inch wheels and then some all terrains and from there, I'm, I'm gonna keep building it out. I got some front runner crossbars I'm gonna put up there. Um, I'm building out a Pelican case for it. My plan as far as lighting goes, cause I do like auxiliary lighting, but I think you kind of look like a tool if it's on your rig all the time. So I'm gonna be using the brush guard that's on the front there. And then probably some more Baja design lights, but um, there's a clamp you can get on Amazon that um, my plan is to find the right fixture that I can just keep the, uh, the wire for the lights kind of just under in the engine bay when I'm not using it. And then when I'm planning an off-road trip, as I outfit it with a tent, etc., I'll just clamp on the off-road lights and already have them set up inside. So um, definitely a lot going on. Um, I have really high hopes for this G-Wagon. Um, I, I think I'm in a unique position and where like that, this last Southern California trip really solidified, you know, the G63 is a viable option in my head. And I, I feel very lucky that I was able to keep my Jeep and the G63 and kind of compare them head to head, realizing that the G63 is not built out yet. But um, I'm really, really looking forward to what this thing turns into. And, um, you know, I'll definitely be making more videos to kind of uh, catalog it along the way. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for me, but I uh, appreciate y'all tuning in. If, uh, you know, anybody out there, if you have any, you know, G-Wagon, you know, 550, 55, 63 conversions that you've done to off-road to actually use the vehicles as they were originally intended, um, hit me up. I'd, I'd love to see your build. So I appreciate y'all tuning in and we'll see you next time.